Welcome to another episode of Coaching Football with Brian Clee. Great news for you defensive coordinators out there. We finally flipped the script here in episode three. We're going to take that beautifully drawn up trap play that that offensive coordinator is dreaming of his players executing it and turn it into a complete nightmare. That's right. If you're a defensive coach, this episode is for you. We're going to be talking about how to get players playing fast, playing downhill, pursuing the ball, causing complete chaos, a complete cluster of the offensive scheme. Before we get into how we fit the trap play and, and to some extent the power play when we're defending the full house tee, um, I think especially for your younger coaches out there, it's important to talk uh, briefly about defensive philosophy and scheme. Um, really believe that you should have a philosophy on defense and, and a scheme that is a flexible system that will play any offensive scheme with similar principles. Um, if you watched episode one, I, I did, did mention that uh, we improved quite a bit on defense uh, just from focusing way more on, on making sure we had consistent t techniques uh, against any offense we saw. Um, every sound defensive scheme is, is going to rely on some sort of force player uh, setting the edge, making sure the, the offense doesn't circle the defense, making sure the ball has to cut back. Um, obviously, there's going to be multiple inside defenders filling all the interior gaps. And then an alley player will run and, and it fit between that, that force player and, and the gap fillers. Then lastly, there, there should be some sort of backside cutback or counter player. Also, every sound defensive scheme obviously has to account for all receiving threats, either by man coverage or zone coverage that is limiting defenders with their run-pass conflicts. Um, and by and large, against a, a tight formation like the full house T, we're, we're preferring a zone. Fitting the full house T specifically, uh, they're relying on a wall of down blocks and kicking out a defender to create a running lane. Like they're primarily going to be uh, reliant on gap schemes, especially for their their core plays, their their top five or so plays. Um, the defense must simply therefore create some gaps in that wall either by ripping under down blocks or defeating double teams or squeezing the air out of down blocks if the, the down blocks happening inside of them. Uh, philosophy thing for us we prefer to spill the ball and kill it on the perimeter it, it just allows all of our guys to have uh, consistent run fits to play fast to play downhill like I said uh, up above you know take the air out of every single play uh, and then lastly from a coverage standpoint we prefer to primarily play matchup zone coverages from a too high shell as we really feel it, it lets us get 11 defenders to every single play turn all 11 guys into potential tacklers and uh, as I mentioned in previous episodes you know, I think what makes really good tacklers is the fact that you get two or three guys on a ball carrier. All right the actual fits. Uh, I'm going to briefly talk about power on each of these. Obviously the, the focus of the episodes uh, the trap play but I, I, I want you to see how with a few differences the, the fits are very consistent. So Trap play, to me, it all starts with that red four technique on, on this particular drawing, that defensive end or tackle, whatever you want to call him. The, the offense wants to trap him. They want him to stay vertical in the, the B to C gap area. The guard's going to come across and, and potentially ear hole him if, if the kid doesn't understand what's going on. Um, and we coach them up either... Uh, ideally, without movement, they're going to step, strike that offensive tackle in front of them. When the offensive tackle steps down, they're going to step down with them, going to squeeze that block, flatten it. Um, number one, it's going to make it, the, the offensive tackles release to the linebacker level uh, much more difficult and probably keep that linebacker clean. Number two, it's, it's, a, a, physical, it's a physical reinforcement of having to have to step down and then as that offensive tackle finally releases he needs to go hunt that guard and then that's one thing that we could still improve on a little bit of uh, kind of attactively actively attacking the guard that's coming to trap him and then from there uh, what we prefer we prefer an odd front I mean this is the defense you turn on the film uh, Constantine or Delton um, this is what they've seen against us the past couple of years there's, there's no hiding it. I mean, this is what we do. Um, 
that knows is what we prefer big time. Uh, if, if that kid can two gap, which we've been blessed, uh, you'll see it on, on film, if that kid can two gap, that's ideal because he's always going to be in the correct a gap. We want him play side A gap. But I also think you, you, you're perfectly fine if you're relying on that kid slanting to one A gap or the other as, as long as your linebackers understand how that might adjust their fit a little bit. Um, from there, I think the, the next most important part is, is the, the linebacker play. Um, our Mac linebacker, until he sees flow away from him or pullers away from him, he is downhill and he's fitting off that four, four or five technique or whatever the defensive lineman is in front of him. And he'll be right outside the trap block uh, the second it gets spilled. Our backside will linebacker, he's keying some backfield flow, and he also should be uh, under keying that, that guard coming trap. So he gets flow away. We teach him to work to that opposite A-gap. If, if that nose flattens things, um, that kid, you go jump over to the power play real quick. I mean, he, he'll make tackles of trap. I, th I think we got one on film. He's tackling trap and C or D gap. He'll get he'll get all the way across and, and make tackles after they get spilled um, by, the, by the, the nine technique over there. Uh, the nine technique here, he should be stepping down if the tight end's blocking down. And he's going to play, uh, sometimes he'll fit inside of that Mac linebacker. He'll actually be the guy who, who plays the spill first and makes the tackle. And then the Mac linebacker will scrape just a little bit wider, even though it's not a scrape scrape per se. But he'll, he'll scrape a little wider and, and be fitting in the D gap. Um, from there, our, our force player, we are uh, a cover two. By and large, when we play the T every once in a while, we'll, we'll mix in a, a cover three situation. But we prefer cover two. Um, that corner is forcing the ball and setting the edge, and he's just got to stay wider than the widest. That's the, and uh, his his primary keys end up being that that tight end to halfback, and the second he sees that halfback up inside, he 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 knows that it's probably run, and and, and at the very least, uh, maybe the tight end's going to come out. Um, the safeties they're going to be a little slower, especially since the tight ends are are releasing. They they got to honor the deep halves. The back side, uh, we'll talk about the, the D line first, I guess. The four technique, he's punching that offensive tackle, and he's visually keying that guard. If he sees that guard pull, or if, if we need to have him on maybe a movement, um, he sees that guard pull. Ideally, we get in his hip pocket, chase the play down from behind, and, and tackle it there. And then same thing, ultimately that backside nine technique, the, uh, the B there on the, on the screen. He's stepping down with that tight end and, and running the heel line, too. And then lastly, the backside corner, he's him and to some extent our safety, but primarily that backside corner is going to be our cutback counter player in, in his job. He's keying tight end through to that halfback. He sees that halfback flow away. He's finding the next threat. So when the, in the T, the next threat from the backfield is going to be that fullback on the trap line. And um, Honestly, their biggest problem uh, the last – three years or so, uh, is, is sometimes that fullback will get completely lost. You won't get a fit on him because you, you just don't. And every once in a while, he'll maybe uh, sneak out the backside A-gap. We, we've still gotten trapped the past couple of years, but that backside cutback corner and just that backside cutback safety has kept most of the trap plays from going for a touchdown. And just uh, looking over at the power, every fit ends up being the same, except for now the Mac linebacker, uh, most of the time the T's going to give him an open B gap. We're best when he hits that thing hard, tries to get a run through, and maybe snipes the play before it gets out to the C gap. And if he closes that window, that lets the will linebacker, again, he sees flow and guard away. He's, he's trying to fit that opposite A. Opposite A is gone. Um, again, that will linebacker, he sees back away, he sees guard away. He's the fullback. If he goes play side at all or doesn't get chopped down.
that will linebacker, he sees flow away, guard away. If our backside four technique fits that fullback and, and that fullback goes down, he sees a bunch of closed windows and can keep on scraping all the way to a spilled power or a quarterback keep or potentially uh, picking up some sort of play action uh, and, and dropping off into coverage. Uh, real briefly, um, we don't run this front um, in, in any way, shape, or form. But uh, if you're an even front team, um, this is how I would coach up an even front team to, to fit the uh, trap and power both. Um, overall, principles end up being quite similar. you got to have a player spilling the trap. The three technique uh, end there is, is spilling the trap. Um, you've got to have guys playing the trap, uh, killing the spill after you get it spilled. So uh, Mac linebacker is going to initially step to that A-gap. He should be ripping underneath the offensive tackles blocks to take away any cutback lanes. And, and again, you're trying to break that wall of down blocks. Uh, the seven technique, um, if you're uh, punch the t tight end but physically key the tackle team, he should see that down block and he's ripping inside. He's, he's going to be the next guy to kill the spill. And then the, the, the stud linebacker, Sam linebacker, should be filling downhill as well uh, right outside that kickout block. Um, um, again, I don't like an even front as much because, uh, as you can see, both tight ends are probably going to be able to take vertical releases here. And now both safeties are going to end up having to have to play a little bit slower as, as far as helping out with uh, a potential cutback or, or out working out to a spill. Um, backside should try and get a hip pocket guy should get a uh, backside seven technique should be bending and you should have your force players again I'd, I'd be cover two um, force players setting the edge and the backside corners the cutback player and again very similar with the power the difference is the Mac linebacker is probably going to be looking for an a gap run through while the nose is trying to uh, the three technique there is trying to split the double team uh, we've used this some, uh, odd one high front. What I don't like about one high, the, the big difference to me is how do you play the cutback? Um, the corner, if you, you're got to be either like a cover one or a cover three team at this point. That corner is responsible for the deep half, so he gets a tight end release and it could be a flag route back to his, his, his uh, deep third there. You know, um, So he's, he's going to be slower I'm getting his eyes into the backfield because he has to. He's, he's a deep third player. And, and to some extent, the same thing. If you, if you want to continue to spill, I, I think you can box. But uh, I, I, I don't know how much you can do both uh, with, with a single player, um, especially play to play and whatnot if you're jumping between fronts. Um, if you're all the time a one, one high team and you want to have this guy box it, uh, I think you can. Now, that's how the T coach has it drawn up. But uh, uh, if this guy's a spill guy, your deep third player, really, you should be like rolling a cover two almost. Um, and, and that corner to the play side should become your force player. And um, So y you definitely take care of trap and, and really clog up the gaps more. But the potential for it, if it sneaks out the backside or something, you, you lose your cutback player to me. Um, uh, to a large extent. And then uh, one high even front. Um, we're, we use this at certain times when, when we know they are probably running the ball. Maybe it's you know uh, first and goal from the five or something like that or second and set, uh, a fourth and one down at the goal line you know we're confident a run play is coming because it's obviously a little weaker against play action pass because you've got less guys to cover the uh, ultimately some sort of out route some sort of flag route uh, the leverage uh, you're putting that force player into a little bit of conflict there um, and then we've also used it you know when we're it's fourth quarter there's two minutes left in the game and you're down by four or five and uh, you know they're running the ball, especially a T team. Um, so, uh, anyways, the the fit again. You got a spill player, uh, that 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 two technique that I have drawn up there. The end, he's going to be spilling the trap, running the circle. You got guys closing off down blocks to kill the spill. 
Mac linebacker is going to be stepping up against scraping. Um, backside will linebacker flow away, guard away. He's scraping to opposite A. Um, this again highlights why we prefer an odd front for the most part. You know that opposite A is sometimes going to maybe be open just a little bit yet, especially if you don't get your nose your two technique there to really squeeze the down block of the guard and, and get the traps built. So he's got to be uh, a little bit more concerned with that A gap not getting filled. And the other thing that I just, I don't love about one high, you you got three guys trying to chase the heel line. It just makes so much more sense to be lined up some sort of two high thing and, and, and let this B be the cutback guy. And, um, I've debated a little bit about maybe teaching this guy to be a, a, a shuffle, cutback, fold type guy. But the thing is, that, that that tight end inside releasing, trying to rip up to the safeties and all that, that's not much different from a down block. And, and especially if you got a lesser experienced kid, I, I want him playing that as a down block and, and looking to spill a, a power or a counter that we'll talk about. And, you know, over here on the other side, down block by tight end, come spill the power. Down block by a tight end is going to be a, maybe a counter. And I, I want him ripping inside and causing havoc. I, I, I don't want him being passive and trying to figure out, oh, is the play away or is it coming at me? Well, play away it might be counter coming back at me. And I'd rather have this kid ripping flat down the line. And, and ultimately, only one of those guys, maybe two, are ever going to run the heel line and effectively tackle the play before it breaks the line of scrimmage. So you're just you're kind of wasting um, and, and for us, that might be one of our better defenders in, in most cases. So as we get into the film, you're going to see right off the bat why I prefer to defend the full house tee and in most offenses with a zero technique nose. Um, if he can reset the center against any gap scheme that has some sort of guard or tackle pull, he's going to create issues for the offense. So here we go. Uh, I'd, I'd like our, we're in a 3-0-3 front. It'd be nice if our outside linebacker would be actually in a six technique on his tight end, but he's going to deliver a nice step and strike here. Keep your eyes on the nose. Right now, he's ate up two blockers, and he's made the path of the backside th guard pull deeper than he planned. Our backside three technique is going to do a great job pickpocketing that pull. And you see a complete cluster. Trap goes for a negative two yards, just never even gets going. And, and it's all to that, all to the credit of that nose. Very strong kid, kind of tall. Here he is again. Tall, strong kid, but very, very explosive. Very strong. Resets the line of scrimmage. You see, can see the pulling guard right behind him. He's at the bottom back of that bubble highlight in that that nose the line of scrimmage got reset by him that guard's never going to get over the trap we're going to make a play for a loss again and again uh, the odd an odd front a zero technique nose lets you do this whereas an even front in our opinion doesn't so now we we do get into a, a modified even front um we've been blessed uh like like i said on the previous slide the zero tech nose that we had was was really really strong really explosive this kid is 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 huge he's 315 pounds he'll, he'll be back as a senior this year it's this is actually his sophomore year um we're in an even front but we're letting him play a one to the defensive right and we've got a two technique to the defensive left um, we were pretty sure that uh, this is Constantine. It was kind of a barn burner of a game, a crazy game. They got out to a lead, and, and we were making a, a little bit of a comeback. We're trying to make a stand on one of the last series in the fourth quarter to get the ball back and give us another chance, and we, we get into even front, and we're pretty sure they're running left, so we're trying to eat that up. And he completely resets the line of scrimmage. You see, let's freeze it there for a second. You see are what was our Mac linebacker. He's actually on a called blitz through the B-gap. He is so used to seeing guard and backfield flow that he puts his foot in the ground and realizes the ball's not going to hit here. 
the two technique in front of me is going to be able to eat it up and because our zero tech nose ended up resetting well, one technique but he reset the line of scrimmage push that center back he's going to be a scrape over the top and make a tackle for again a loss the other thing that's really really helpful against the trap uh, watch our th five technique I believe from the back side here he's gonna step he's gonna be flat down the line and gonna end up hip pocketing the polar there's definitely some help from a couple other players which we'll see on the end zone view but he's the guy primarily helping make the tackle so there we are three technique is hip pocketing his guard the tackles trying to cut him our backside five technique I'd like him to be lower and actually striking the tackle but he understands tackles cutting that guard the ball somewhere inside here he goes flat down the line of scrimmage our one technique reset the line of scrimmage and there's our five technique tackle hip pocketing and, and making the play from behind again for no gain Another trap play. Now we're, uh, I believe we're, we're okay. We're too high. We got five techniques. They're on called pinches. Comes flat down the line of scrimmage. Understands that he needs to keep pursuing and makes a great tackle for loss again. Same kid. We, we've had multiple guys hit pocket, and you're, you're going to see that probably on a power. But that's that's it for the trap clips. So he's aiming for that outside hip of the guard. The tackle does get an inside release. I'd like him to come flatter. Our five technique on the other side pinches and does spill the trap. So the, the trap's got to widen. It stays off course, which is the important part. We got some linebackers fitting it. Linebackers actually scrape out to power. They, they, they're, they could be more downhill. But that five technique from the backside, make sure it goes for, again, no gain. Here we go. Uh, another hip pocket of the puller. So you're going to be watching, uh, this is a four tech from the left side. Um, again, it's, it's a called movement in this situation. If uh, I feel like we just... We're going to maybe see a trap. I really like to be moving inside. He aims for that guard's hip pocket, and right away he's there. Ball stop. No game. Good stuff. Here we're going to be on a movement. Keep an eye on the five technique to the top of the screen. Squeezes inside. You can see right now his face mask. He could have lower pad level and all that, but his face mask is inside the guard's face mask. He is going to spill the trapping guard. Defeats him. Finds the fullback. Runs his runs his feet. Um, and, and this kid's been a great kid for us. He he's played 37 varsity games for us. Uh, been playing since he was a freshman, and, and makes a heck of a play. Been an all-state wrestler, or a discus thrower. You can see him run his feet at the end of the play. And does some sort of wrestling move. <laughs> and our our end zone guy missed all of it. Here's a great case of inside linebackers understanding their gaps. Watch the will linebacker on the top of the screen. You can see him. Let's let's watch that one more time. You can see him step with the flow and the guard, puts his foot in the ground because he realizes something's coming right back at him. End zone view is even sweeter. So again, he's keying that guard through to that near back. He's looking for guard pulling away. He's looking for back away. And then he's looking to match the opposite A gap. We're in a slant blaze. It's near the end of the game. and I'm trying to help our defense make something happen. And our nose, freeze it right here. Our nose, I don't, I don't coach a swim like that all the time, um, but that kid's explosive, and, and he's, he's made some plays like that. 
and he's completely canceled the play side A gap. You can see our Mac linebacker, number three, he, he's canceled the play side B gap. Um, we've got a four technique that is canceling the C gap, and we got our nine technique canceling D gap. So all those gaps are filled, and with the body language of that wheel linebacker, I can tell he saw guard away and then put his foot in the ground because the fullback was cutting back right at him. Um, this is from a scrimmage two years ago. This is probably the smartest defensive lineman I've coached. He understand. He he he's uh he's actually on that film from the last episode getting trapped and given one of the touchdowns that went for about 50 yards. And he learned from that his junior year. Made some really good plays his junior year and senior year. He was lights out. He got a down block. He's down inside. He's looking for something to spill. Um, and this was pretty impressive. He's a four technique. Squeezes down, hits the guard, runs the circle exactly like he's coached to do, and makes sure it goes to no gain. Well, a gain of one. But not bad. End zone view. And this this is early. This is a scrimmage. Our nine techniques are not nine techniques at all. Uh, nine techniques for us should be covering up the outside half of that tight end. We get a decent hit pull out of our backside four. And that is the spill drill we coach. Goes inside, runs the circle, grabs onto the fullback, doesn't let go until his teammates rally, and, and we make a tackle. Kind of some good stuff. Here we go. We're actually in an even front. We got a couple guys on a called pinch here. And the fullback has nothing. Play side five here is going to do a decent job getting hands on. Play side three, he's on a called movement. Backside five is also on a called movement. Play side three, he might be 150 pounds. Trap spilled though. And, and that's why we favor spilling over boxing. That kid's 160 pounds. He's probably taking on about a 200 pound kid. If you just make your mind up, I'm going to rip inside. You can make some good things happen. Big mess inside there. Key thing, that five technique, he's going to run the circle around the pulling guard. And tackles the fullback again because he's playing flat down the line of scrimmage. Textbook stuff. Here we go. Uh, once again, trap to the defensive right. Does a great job making sure the ball goes outside. The one thing he could do better is, is hunt that guard and create a dent. He doesn't run the circle, he absorbs the block. If he focuses on knocking that guard back, he maybe makes a tackle himself. And then the other issue on the play that, that could have made this a oh, negative one or, or maybe a zero yard gain at the most, our nine technique there should have kept squeezing the down block of the tight end and he's completely unblocked by their scheme. There's, there's no way to get him blocked. He's already spilling the halfback so he's done his job if it was power but he might as well keep going because there's there's no threat there and our nose I mean you can see the penetration he's creating that that guard doesn't have the clean pull and, and again that's why we prefer not front backside linebacker does a great job coming over cleaning it up the spill killing the spill trap once again against the even front So we're, we're pinching. Backside three, little guy. He's down inside. He's in the A-gap. Three-yard gain. Kind of a very decently executed play on both sides of the ball there. Uh, this is, as, as much as this is a good example of spilling, it's also a ridiculous example of a player making a play. This is towards the end of the game. We, we don't think the run's going to happen. We've got uh, both twos are going to be pinching to the center. He's inside. The guard never gets there. And he, uh, the tackle is impressive. He, up front, uh, his, his technique was to step inside and make sure the guard goes outside. And he did that part. That was coached. This next part, that, that's not coached. And, and that's something that 
all of us high school coaches understand, and I have coaches at any level understand. That's a player making a play. That is a guy who put in his time in the weight room to be prepared. Here's us from this year. And you're going to see a really good fill and scrape by our inside linebackers. So that, that inside linebacker, his job is to fill downhill. He doesn't see any guard pull or flow away from him. And he pretty much shakes the tackle by himself. Actually, this, this is going to be a play, I'm pretty sure we, we get trapped. And I, 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 as much as I coach it, as much as we coach it, we still get trapped. But we do a better job of making sure it doesn't go for touchdowns anymore. So right now, he's reading back straight at me, flow straight at me. I'm going to be straight back at the fill. I see a guard down block to confirm it. I'm going to fill it. It's underneath the tight end's block. And he's in position to make sure trap only goes for four yards. This play is, is one of the plays that I love. Now, we, we still have a starting outside linebacker in. At both six techniques here, but we are we are lined up with uh, quite a few backups on the field. This is is near one of the last plays of the game, and th this shows how hard we coach getting better at defending trap, especially. Right now, we we got three yellow shirts on the ball, traps out in D gap. I'm pumped as the defensive coordinator. End zone view is, is just absolutely awesome. So here he comes, trap to the offensive left, defensive right. Our three technique has his guard moving down inside, finds the guard. He, and, and this, again, he's a backup. He's, he's done his job. He's a backup for a reason. He, he's going to fall down. But the ball's going outside him. He understands. If I want to play, I need to spill trap, and, and he's doing a great job. And in fact, he he was on film in that 68-point game uh, that you, you saw. He, he got trapped in that game. He fills the A gap. Our Mac linebackers downhill. He's underneath the tackles down block, filling B gap. Our backside will linebackers scraping, filling the C gap. And our two linebackers, one from the backside. Let's watch that all the way through real quick. So watch that backside linebacker. He's moving down inside, pursuing the heel line. Keeps coming, keeps coming, keeps coming, and makes the tackle with our outside linebacker on the other side. Very, very great play, showing that our guys understood their jobs. Another good trap fit. Let's check out the end zone for you. There we go. We got. Again, I, I prefer, I want to play downhill. If, if I don't see a guard pull as a linebacker, we got to go fill a gap because that's where the ball probably is coming. He fills down inside. His three technique ends up basically being in the A gap. He's in the B gap. We've got uh, the outside linebacker fitting on the tight end there. He's in D gap. Our wheel linebacker starting to scrape. Comes across. And if our corner didn't make the play, I'm pretty sure our will linebacker makes it. He has little, little, uh, not as good as leverage, I guess. And they probably get three or four yards, but that corner does a great job killing the spill. Let's get straight to the end zone clip here because that starts a little early. So here it is again. Fortec is spilling the trap. Our wheel linebacker is fitting right outside the trap, ready to kill it. Our nine technique is stepping inside, making sure the ball spills outside of him. We get both the uh, inside linebacker and the outside linebacker and the four tech ran the hoop, ran the circle around the, the trapping guard, and we get three guys making the tackle. And again, you younger coaches, tackling's better when you get multiple guys to the ball. Uh, now this this is what why we prefer a, a too high shell e even against a double tight full house backfield like the T it, it gives us multiple chances to make sure all right they get us trapped but we're gonna make sure that ball doesn't go to the end zone so at safety he's the deep half player he's keying tight end to half back here 
Tight end rips inside. He's starting to make some contact. Feels like the safety's feeling like he's down blocking. He's confirming back's going away. That tight end, at this point of the play, his, his numbers are turned. He's perpendicular line of scrimmage. He's parallel to the, the sideline there. He's not running a pass route. And that safety puts himself in good position, hunts for the fullback. And what would have been a touchdown probably two, three years ago, doesn't go. End zone view. And this, this trap, again, they, they end up hitting the play side A gap. This is pretty much how they have it drawn out. Our five technique there, he's trapped. You know, that's, that's not what we want there. But this kid at safety is doing a great job as a senior, uh, making sure he is disciplined. He finds a fullback. Our backside outside linebacker does a great job running the heel line, and, and we stop something from going for a touchdown, give ourselves a chance to play again. Another great example, that, that's not a great example of a stance, you know, the corner on the other side, way more athletic looking right now than this, this kid's just a hard-nosed player for us three years ago. He knows that, that trap, that, that flow goes away. He's keying, all right, tight away, flow away, what's the next threat? That guy. And if he doesn't make that play with the wall they got for him, that might be a touchdown. Again, I, I I think you can get this out of a one high shell, but I'm not as good as coaching it. And, and for you younger guys, especially, coach what you know. Coach what you can get to coach. My my defensive back coach is also my head coach. Uh, again, guy's name is Joe Stevens. He has these guys coached up. They're, they they understand their job. Come across, chop it down, seven yard gain. Let's let's live and play for another down. As always, guys, if you have questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. Check me out and follow me on Twitter at Coach Klee. Um, don't forget to su subscribe to the channel if you like what you see. And if you have uh, anything that maybe requires a longer response, hit me up at CoachBrianKlee at gmail.com. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. See you again.